Good evening, channel family. Man, those skies tonight really look like winter clouds. I don't know how it looks like in your neck of the woods, but here in darkest north <laughs> Ohio, it looks cold. And it is cold, and that's why I'm in the car. Still dealing with a little bit of crud in my system, but hopefully um, I'll just keep moving and getting a lot of sleep, and hopefully it'll go away. Been uh, a lot of prayer warriors letting me know they were praying for me. I want to say thank you. I appreciate it. And I wanted to share something with you uh, today. This is going to be a short video. Um, I had a dream last night. You're probably like, really? Again? Um, <laughs> but I feel such a strong urge to share this with you. And i um, been holding on to it today and praying about it. But And it wasn't a very um, detailed dream. It wasn't even very a quick, uh, very quick dream. But it was an urgent dream, and I um, dreamt that I heard the trumpet sound, a loud, clear sound, and I was stunned. But what was more stunning was I watched people disappear around me, and I quickly realized that I wasn't getting taken. Now, right before I was in, it, this is kind of going to be hard to explain. You ever have a dream where you're looking down at people? Uh, from above and then you you switch track and now you're looking from a person's perspective so that's what happened to me I was looking from above and I could see people shooting up like light and then all of a sudden I was down on on ground level and uh, I realized in the dream that I was a man <laughs> I was an older man in this dream and I realized the Lord was showing me this as a warning to others um, because this man um, even as I was watching others disappear around me, I quickly felt horrified because I knew what was coming. But the whole time that people were disappearing around me, I was shocked because I was religious. I had done all these great things. I had, um, I was lit, rattling off a list in my head. I've done this, Lord, for you. I've done that for you, Lord. And it made me think of Matthew 7, 21 through 23, which I want to read for you. Um, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who dare uh, does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I will never, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And you can read that and say, well, it sounds like they're, they're lawless. How's that possible if they're saying, I did this in your name and I did that in your name? Well, that's the point. They're doing, doing, doing things in Jesus' name, but they don't have a relationship with Jesus. They're counting on their works, guys. They're counting on their works to get them there. And it says, it talks about the will of the Father. And it also says on that day, um, both the will of the Father and that day are described in John 6, 4. The scripture is, and this is the will of him who sent me, that be the Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. The last day, what is the last day? The last day is from beginning to end, the start when the Lord takes his church. The world goes through its seven years of tribulation. And at the end of that time, still the same day, figurative day, the Lord comes back. So, and he comes back and we are with him. His saints are with him. So when you hear about the great and terrible day of the Lord, it's great. It's, it's, it's a looming day ahead, but it, it's great for us, but it's terrible for those who get left here. And for those who are here when he returns, it's going to be awful. Um, I'd rather be behind him than facing him on my uh, steed <laughs> than facing him. But also, um, there's this will of him who sent me. What's the will of God who sent Jesus? Is that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him will have everlasting life. So, you know, prophesying his name. Seemingly, this, this other scripture passage in Matthew suggests that these people thought they knew the Lord. I mean, if you're doing something in someone's name, you're doing it um, as an ambassador or on a, um, 
in, in uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, as a representative of that person. So if you think you have power, and, um, you know, it's interesting that um, people can think they have the power of God behind them, but it's something else. Uh, but if you think you can do all these things in your own strength, and you're represent, re representing Jesus, but you don't have a relationship with him, uh, I urge you to understand what it means to believe on Jesus for your salvation. And that means not only your your spiritual salvation, but also for the salvation that comes um, on the day that he calls us up, the bodily salvation. Uh, so you are, <clears throat> you're erring when all, when you, um, when all you're doing is doing, 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 doing. There is one thing you should do, of course, and that is believe on Jesus Christ for your salvation. Now, everything else, um, I've heard people say, yeah, of course you believe, but then after that, you got to do this to keep it. Um, now we're talking about maintaining our salvation instead of cultivating it and um, discipleship. And we've moved on past that point. And now we're saying, look, um, now to, in order to hold on to your salvation, you need to do this and this and this. And some people split salvation away from um, the rapture, but I think that is an error. And I just want to say why. And I love people who disagree with me. It's fine. But I cannot separate the two because Jesus says, not one that the Father gave me will, um, will I lose. And so I have a hard time believing that if someone is saved, and it says they're sealed into the day of redemption, um, they can turn around and be left behind. And then be um, stuck having to choose whether or not they'll take the mark of the beast and therefore putting themselves in another um, situation where they could lose their salvation. And uh, it just, the two don't mesh for, I mean, for whatever reason, um, I think it's pretty clear that those who are his, they go. And I'm going to get a lot of backlash from that in this video. I know I am. Um, but in this stream, though, I want to tell you the the fear that I felt as this person who thought he was doing everything right, doing everything for the Lord, as unto the Lord, but didn't rely on the Lord. He relied on his works and then was left. It was absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Um, you don't want to be here. You don't want to be one of the surprised flock. Um, those in the church who have been churched all their lives only to realize that the one thing that you were required to do was to believe and you didn't do that and have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus, um, Jesus will know his flock and he's not going to lose one. I, I am imploring you to think about, uh, your relationship with the Lord to think about what motivates you. Is it the work that you're doing for him or is it the love that you have for him? That's all. So I'm probably going to get some flack for it, but this dream was so powerful and so visceral because I felt like I was really there and in it and experiencing the horror of it. And I just don't want anybody to experience that. Don't do that. While there's time, Please give your life to Christ. Please understand that he died to save you and he loves you. And yes, he resurrected three days later. And we're going to get to experience that resurrection power and glory very soon when he calls us up. First the dead in Christ, then us. So I wanted to share that with you. I had a friend also that had a dream that he was on his last day of work and he was packing sweets of all things, which I think may represent rewards. And, uh, he got into his old car and it was less than a quarter um, full. And so it was really close to empty. And I think that describes where the church is at right now. Now we have the strength, the supernatural strength of God in us, but we as a church as a whole are weary from the evil that vexes us as Lot, Lot was vexed by the evil around him. So I just wanted to share that real quick. I hope you guys have a um, beautiful night. I love you all. And I am okay with um, comments that disagree with me, but try to be friendly about it. Uh, I've had some people just really, whew, guys, these are brothers and sisters, and I love you all, but 
sometimes I can't allow very um, contemptuous comments on my thread or on my um, wall. I know I've had, I've been talking to somebody who really thinks that um, that scripture that says many are called but few are chosen means that um, we're only chosen when we do what the Lord wants and not just, um, not necessarily just believe on Jesus Christ for our salvation, but that we have to keep um, backloading it with works and maybe, maybe we'll be counted worthy. Oh man, don't get me started on that scripture. I've heard that one misunderstood so much, but um, we are worthy guys. We're not worthy of our own strength. We're not worthy of our own, um, on our own authority. We're worthy when we place our trust on in Jesus and his righteousness is imputed to us, onto us. That's how we're worthy. When it says pray to be worthy, he was talking to the Jewish people and he hadn't died yet on the cross. And he knew that day was coming when they would be praying for salvation and they would be receiving him in the future. It hadn't happened yet. Now we are to pray to be worthy as far as we should be ready we shouldn't be living in sin. We should be ready to see him with a clear conscience. But just know that the only thing that makes you worthy is his righteousness. His righteousness imputed to you when you believe on him for salvation. So um, I know, like I said, I'm going to get attacked for this. Um, there are so many people on the, um, in the, uh, what's that one, what's that one uh, group? Not, it's Grace Plus, but it, there's another word for it. Oh, um, Lordship Salvation. Um, Lordship Salvation um, group, and I'm not trying to um, divide people into little groups, but if you um, disagree with me, you can email me, and we can have a discussion about it. I'll leave my email address on here, but I just request that we keep it civil in the comment section. All right, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.